board of trustees um, and be pleased to talk on any of the topics specific to this if there are people that have questions during the audience. Can you uh, give us some insight on timing of the launch? Well, first of all, uh, thank you, Clay. Um, it's up to the brand owners to just to the launch of the product. We are announcing it today, allowing them the appropriate runway to bring it to market under their brands. So I don't want to take away from any of our partners in the marketplace unless they'll do the talking, but it will be in the market this fall. Thank you. You mentioned 100% compostable rice down compared to your in how many weeks? Depends on each of the systems, but it will be in weeks, weeks. not for thousands of years that would happen in a landfill. Okay. Now we'll uh, welcome questions from say that we're well on the road to building that infrastructure, or at least building the alliances on that infra infrastructure. Uh, and it's the same infrastructure that will need to be developed regardless of what solution uh, the marketplace uh, uh, is required in the marketplace. So we're down that road already, and, and I think we've got a number of, of leading promising ways of gaining maximum access to consumers. Al? I can't add much to that. That was very thorough. <laughs> Uh, other than emphasize, as I mentioned, that more and more communities are banning organics from landfills. Uh, uh, New York City is, is a great example, which I'm sure you, you've all read about or heard about, and we're seeing more and more of these bans uh, pop up across the country. So I see uh, more and more opportunity for composting, uh, recycling of organics to occur across the nation. But I'd, I'd say it's even more than the compostable one issue we're talking about today. This also represents <coughs> fundamental principle of sustainability. We roast millions and millions of pounds of coffee at Club Coffee, and we were throwing out thousands and thousands of tons of coffee chaff. The fact that all that coffee chaff is going to be reused as a carbon source for this drink, I think is a terrific story. And a story like that adds to the momentum we need to do to get more and more people to do the mm -hmm. composting at home. But you've got to start somewhere. And that's why we're so pleased in Seattle today to say this is what we're Somebody has started to do it, and we're the world's first people to try and do it and do it right. Now, my family's been in business for over 100 years. Mm -hmm. We take a long term view. We try to do the right thing. And this just feels so right to me that the consumer will accept this, see this as a fundamental change, and help change an industry. Innovation comes from competition, and this is a good thing. We were all pleased with the, with the single serve revolution. 
if we don't have competition, we don't have innovation, we don't make it even better. And that's the real message today, is we're making single serve coffee better. We're taking that guilt factor away because coffee drinking should be a pleasurable experience. When you've got guilt factor, you're staying out of this market or maybe not staying in this market. And I think the fundamentally the coffee industry needs to embrace this as the next wave and the next wave for single serve. So, um, is this on? Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, first of all, in the normal processing of coffee, we deal with as much CO2 as we can before we actually finish packaging the, the, the coffee. Secondly, because our pod is open, the filter is open, that, um, that coffee is able to dissipate into its environment, which may sound like a negative thing, but uh, what we've done is, is we've added the protection to the coffee pods as a family. So we actually would package these in a... Uh, foil bag that uh, is sealed, uh, nitrogen flushed, and also has a ga uh, degassing valve is what we call it. It's, it allows the CO2 to, to naturally uh, push out of that bag uh, as it continues to generate, and so there's really no pressure buildup inside the bag, and the bags are, you know, uh, they look the same, you know, a month later as they did the day that you packed them. So we've built the technology actually around this second containment uh, of the pod, which is the bag that we package it in. This town says coffee, but it's also because we're really recognizing Seattle as being a leader in composting. And it was appropriate to do it here at the Specialty Coffee Association meetings. Uh, endorsing the efforts of this community to do the right thing on composting, and Al, you can speak to this more, it's a one-two punch, we think. And uh, again, Seattle says coffee. The entire West Coast uh, is really leading the nation in compost manufacturing, compost, uh, commercial compost manufacturing. Uh, as an example, all of the departments of transportation along the East Coast, or rather West Coast, California, Caltrans, Washington DOT, Oregon DOT, all now require compost being applied in their landscape projects. So uh, as John said, it's, it's a natural fit from so many different perspectives. Uh, the right mentality being in the West Coast, uh, the recycling mentality, and then of course, as I've said a couple of times already, the recycling loop is only complete when that compost is reused, and it's being reused in huge volumes out here on, on the West Coast. Is there then a, qu a possibility of this advancing to the, the Nestle and Nespresso machines? Uh, there, is, there is work being done on that, and this time next year, 